In this video, I'm going to go over a retuning guide and how to implement it at the uh, Terry Campus Building Automation System. So, if we look at our um, building retuning, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff on this website. But if we go to the large building retuning resources, and now instead of the training, the training's still really good. There's lots of really good resources in there. If we go to the guide here, um, we're going to cover today, we're going to cover the occupancy scheduling night and weekend temperature setback. So whenever I open one of these guides, the first thing I want to do is I want to go down, you know, it's a good thing to read over the summary, um, but I want to go down to look at the data that I need on my BIS system. So I'm going to do this for um, Air Handling Unit 5. Um, so let's go ahead and we logged into our BIS. We're going to go into our histories. Actually, you know what? Let's first look at the Air Handling Unit 5 just to get an idea of what that's go what's going on. If we look at the graphics for Air Handling Unit 5, it's a um, VAV air handler. Um, serves three VAV boxes, I believe. And um, it does have um, outside air control, and it's controlled with inlet, um, inlet vein dampers, which um, the vortex percentage is how those dampers are controlled. And then there's a duct static pressure here. Um, so, and there's obviously, and there's a chilled water coil to keep the supply air temperature constant. So we have that going on. And now we're going to look at the, the histories for some of these things. So um, the first point we're going to look at is the duct static pressure. And we are going to go to our histories up here. If it's not already expanded, just expand it. And we're going to go to the CTC building. And we're going to go to Air Handling Unit 5. And we are going to go to, let me double check, duct static pressure. So we're going to find the duct static pressure on here for Air Handling Unit 5. And here's static. So we can double click that. It's going to automatically give us just today's um, reading. And let's go ahead and get the rest of our points, and then we'll dig into what's going on here. And then we're going to do supply fan status now. And so let's, I don't think we have a supply fan status here. Um, we can we can double check. Um, so we have that's CO2. That's the chilled water valve percentage. That's the discharge air um, static set point. Discharge air temperature. There's a flow station. The mixed air temperature. The mixed um, mixed air damper return um, air humidity. Return air temperature. Return um, fan vortex. The space temperature and the supply vortex. So the closest thing we have really is the supply vortex. Um, it's not exactly, but um, we'll, we'll at least put it in there just to have. And then we have, we want outdoor air temperature. So outdoor air temperature is a little bit weird. Um, it turns out for some reason this outdoor air temperature in um, in the CTC building is not good. Um, it actually gives you relative humidity for some reason. So we're going to go down to the Terry building and we're going to grab that outside air temperature. So we're going to grab that here and drag it over. You don't want to double click because if you double click it will get rid of the data you already have. You want to click and drag over. And then um, this gives you a little warning which is good. Um, so here the units are percentage which is the green. If I click degrees Fahrenheit then it gives us the degrees Fahrenheit. So um, we can see sort of the temperature within the last day. That's the temperature profile um, and that makes sense. So good, so now we have the outdoor air temperature. Let's go back and get the outdoor air damper position signal. Um, so we don't need the Terry building anymore, so we can collapse that. We're going to go back up to AHU5. And um, the only damper position we have um, is the mixed air damper, but the mixed air damper is linked to the relief damper and the outside air damper, so um, really it, it's fine. We can just use one. So we'll go ahead and click and drag that over. Um, and then we will get the last thing, which is the discharge air temperature. So let's look at the discharge air temperature. Oh, no, I got AHU4 mixed damper, so we can get rid of that. Let's go to AHU5 mixed damper. So there's AHU5. So then the last thing we'll do is the discharge air temperature. And... Then you can go to do, 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 HU5, discharge air temperature. 
Okay. So there's a lot of information on this. The, the first thing you could possibly do is you could click, um, and you can at any point you can see what's going on in each of those things. And then um, I like these graphs because they sort of, you can go to each one and see what's going on uh, by doing that. Um, but there's a couple different things we want to look for. So the first thing um, we want to look at is just the duct static pressure. So um, I can look at just the duct static pressure. Now, this is bad operation because there's no night setback for this office building. and We're sort of like an office building in a school. Better operation is that we have a night setback. And really good operation is we have a more aggressive night setback. Well, um, we're pretty much at bad operation here because we never go down to zero, right? So the supply, the static pressure, and again, um, the static pressure is inches of water column, so it's on this side, and you can see it's sort of this color. So this lines up with that axis. So it never, it does go down to point two at some points, um, but it never goes down to zero, especially in the, in the wee hours of the morning when it really should be off. So, um, so we know that that's bad operation. And so if you were doing a report, you would, um, just make a graph of the static pressure and snip it and uh, make that. So the other thing you can do, just to make it cleaner, is just show the static pressure like that. And again, the blue, it's just so I don't have to redo this, the blue is HU4, and that's why I'm not um, toggling that on. Okay, so we looked at that with the static pressure. So those are all those graphs. And again, you could make a sort of screenshot and basically say, bad operation, right? And then and then we also want to look at um, weekends. So we looked at nights here. So this is today, right? So that's the night. There's no set point. Um, we can also go and just look at the last seven days. So it looks like something's happening on the weekends because we've looked at Friday night and then into Saturday and Sunday, it looks different than the others. But still, it should go down to zero, and it never goes down. And again, we're looking at this, this axis over here, and it never goes down to zero. So we know that's a problem. So it's bad weekend setback, too. And, um, and then we can see... Um, you know, the... Um, the fan is cycling too often during unoccupied hours. So it's actually, our fan is cycling a lot um, during, and, oh, and this is supply fan status, never mind. We don't have supply fan status, so we can't really do that. So the thing about this is outdoor air damper, we want to see if the outdoor air damper is open during unoccupied hours. So the first thing we need to look at is just the damper. I believe that's this one. Let's double check. Yep. So, and let's just look at today for now. So we're going to look at today. We're going to see what's going on with the outdoor air damper. So it looks like it really changes at around 845, 815, which is actually really good, right? So, so again, this is, oh, I'm sorry, this is the static pressure. Oh, no, no, no. That's just the name of the graph. This is the, uh, the mixed damper. So um, what's going on here is that this is, there's 0% in the middle of the night, which is good. Um, and then, you know, in the early morning hours, for um, they, it might turn on a little bit. And then it doesn't really come on until midday here and open up. So, um, so that looks like good operation. Let's look at the past week. So the last seven days. And again, here's Saturday. The problem is in Saturday... We do sort of go from 6.15, and it looks like it drops it again at around um, noon, which is good on Saturday. But then there's a problem um, on Sunday. It's open on Sundays, which, which it really shouldn't be. Um, so those are the type of things you want to look for. You want to look for a nice pattern. So again, if we had um, bad operation, sort of it's, uh, it's, it's not going off on the weekends. Good operation is that... Um, it, it remains closed. So it's completely closed during building warm-up and unoccupied hours. So let's see what else we can we can show. Um, 
So this one's a, usually get a static pressure reset during unoccu lightly occupied periods. So, you know, 8 p.m., you know, early morning. Um, but our problem is, is there's no rhyme or reason to our static pressure. So we really can't, um, again, if we look at this, there's no real rhyme or reason to our static pressure. So we can't really um, say anything about that. And then we don't have the data for the for the other thing. This is the whole building consumption consequences. So that's the idea. Is really what you're looking for is you want to sort of try to recreate some of these graphs on each of these these areas, and then copy and paste and show whether it's good operation and bad operation. You don't have to s explain everything in the graphs. You want to, especially for this occupancy, you just want to go through and um, talk about. Um, you know whether or not their system setback or not, um, and and in this case, it, in the case of our AHU, it looks like it's not very good. And then um, the big thing is too, you can go ahead and just copy and paste these graphs, or if you wanted to, you could hit this button, and export to Excel, um, or export as a PDF. The easiest thing to do is just to um, is just take a screenshot wherever you want. Um, and then, and then like a print screen or a snipping snipping tool, and then you can paste this graph however you'd like. Um, you can change the the title too, so that way it's a little bit easier to read if you want. Okay, so that's it for this video, and that's sort of a your retuning overview.